Good morning, wet chambers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeTune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put in your earbuds, adjust that speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. What is Second Cup? Well, Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next three MB airs, or a piece of late breaking information the viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the March 18th, 2024 episode of Second Cup. How are you this morning? I hope you're having a great morning. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. We have got that beautiful Sterling Roastery coffee mug again this morning, and we're enjoying the Sterling Roastery house blend coffee in it. It's absolutely a fantastic, fantastic blend of coffee. Really, really terrific. I also used the uh, breakfast blend uh, the other morning. That was, (laughs) oh wow, that was really, really good as well. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd go with the house blend again this morning. And this mug is just, here, I'm just going to tap it here, right here. Boy, this mug is just absolutely wonderful. You know, I may have forgotten to give you um, on microphone in the Monday morning mailbag, some of the specs on this mug. I know I put them on screen, but I want to give them to you again. Uh, this uh, mug uh, sold by Sterling is created by shstoneware.com. Now that stands for Sunset Hill Stoneware. Uh, and uh, they enclosed the little card, got, it, got the card right there, uh, with some specs on their stoneware products. Uh, and um, it says here it's handcrafted pottery, it's microwave safe, eco friendly, oven safe, made in the USA, and dishwasher safe. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, boy, that checks all the boxes, doesn't it? I don't know uh, how safe it is in the oven to what temperature, so I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna speculate on that. I will leave you to visit their website and get those specs on that on that particular um, aspect of the of the coffee mug. Uh, and if you need to contact them and uh, speak to them directly, I'm sure they'll give you all the uh, correct information. But I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna say uh, what temperature it's safe to because I don't know. But uh, they also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page at Sunset Hill Stoneware. So. Uh, that's where you want to contact them and follow them. That is, uh, that is really a, just a terrific, terrific mug. It is really, really very, very nice. And a big, big thank you to Mark Bagwell for very kindly sending it to the channel. I really love these stoneware mugs. Uh, we have another one, uh, the Indiana Jones stoneware mug that came from um, uh, Jamie Horn. That's another great, great uh, coffee mug, and it's also got a wonderful badge on there uh, with Indiana Jones, and uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. It really is. So a couple of great stoneware mugs in the uh, in the old kitchen here, and uh, really, I'm just enjoying them both. They're ab- absolutely fantastic. But the coffee this morning is great. And by the way, when the package arrived, uh, included was this right here. Okay, hear that. That is a, um, a sample of uh, Sterling's uh, Bay Rum Bath Soap. And it's in a sealed plastic bag here, sealed all the way around, heat sealed all the way around. And I guess it's done that way for freshness to you know, keep the freshness of it. And uh, just a perfect, perfect size for travel. So whenever I get something like this, whether it be a bath soap or some other item that is of travel size, 
uh, I put it aside uh, for those weekend getaways, that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to using the Sterling uh, Bay Rum Bath Soap uh, when I have a weekend getaway and I'll take along some Phoenix Shaving Bay Gum Shave Soap because I got the travel container for that and uh, the travel size aftershave splash bottle. So I'll be all set with some great Bay Rum scented uh, bar, uh, bath soap and uh, shave soap and uh, aftershave splash. Really, really excited about that. So I think I'm going to have to, um, you know, I, I have these, tr these, these travel size samples set aside, but I'm going to have to put them into one main container and place them somewhere on a shelf so I know where all the travel size stuff is. So if I do have that weekend getaway, I can go right to one location and pull every pull out whatever I want to and kind of mix and match and get something nice that I can put into my dop kit that is travel size. And I'm wondering if anyone out there does something similar. Do you do that? Do you, uh, do you kind of consolidate all these samples that come into your uh, shave den and kind of put them aside so that you have them for travel just in case? Maybe you also have it included with some travel size scuttles uh, that sort of thing in the, in the St. Patrick's Day shave that I did yesterday. And by the way, happy belated St. Patrick's Day to everyone. Uh, I was using that uh, green lathering bowl. That's a collapsible travel size uh, lathering bowl, shave bowl. Uh, yeah, that worked great. That, <laughs> that was wonderful. And um, I think I'm going to take uh, that bowl and a couple other travel size bowls and get all these samples and put them all in one one container in one area in the house so I know exactly where it is so that, uh, you know, I can go right to it and pick out whatever I want to rather than searching all over the house and <laughs> various locations, that sort of thing. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in again this morning. I really do appreciate it. Once more, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We have got uh, some really nice topics this morning, and we will get to the show. Uh, well, you know what? We'll get to the show just as soon as we pay a few bills. Oh, you know what? Before I go any further, I always say this, you know, we'll get to the show, but let's first pay a few bills, that sort of thing. Now, when I first started this podcast, um, uh, Spotify uh, had a, um, an ad revenue uh, that you could uh, option into uh, where, you could, where they would insert ads. And when I first started the uh, the podcast, they allowed me to do these uh, to record these ads. They gave you a little script, and I recorded the ad, and then they would automatically drop the ad in wherever you wanted, however many times you wanted. And I only opted to drop in one ad right at the beginning of the show and kind of get it out of the way. And if it uh, if it generated a little bit of uh, revenue for the channel, that would be great. That would be wonderful, and it wouldn't be that long of an ad. And if you've heard those ads in the past and you've, you've uh, sat through them, thank you very, very much. Now, I continue to say, hey, we'll pay a few bills and then we'll get to the show. And I insert uh, a placeholder for, the, for that ad. But I think they've changed their, their ground rules uh, as far as how a podcast is eligible for these ads now. So I don't know if mine is eligible anymore. Maybe I don't have enough... Uh, Enough, uh, enough listeners, or I'm get, not getting enough listen, listens. <laughs> I'm not getting enough uh, uh, activity on it to warrant them saying, okay, now we're going to insert ads for you. So I don't know exactly what's going on. So uh, if you happen to hear me say, uh, okay, you know, we'll, we'll pay a few bills and we'll get to the show. And you don't hear an ad after that. Please, you know, email me and let me know. Email me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and let me know if that ad is coming through because I, I don't know what's going on entirely. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, the, uh, uh, the listenership of the, of, the, of the podcast grows a little more so that those ads uh, will automatically start kicking in again and I have to go back to reading those scripts. It was a lot of fun to do that. So um, I'm just mentioning that in passing. So uh, if you hear me mention about an ad coming up, uh, I say that only because um, I'm not yet eligible again for ads, but who knows, maybe if I get enough listeners, those ads will automatically drop in on all the podcasts across the board, which is why I continue to say it. So I thank you for your patience with that uh, little bit of a detail there. So uh, let's pay a few bills <laughs> and we'll get the show underway in just a moment. Well, before we go any further, I wanted to remind you once again of uh, three events that are uh, coming up. 
Of course, April 8th is the Great North American Solar Eclipse. We've been talking about that on the Monday Morning Mailbag, and I wanted to remind you once more that April 8th, the Great North American Solar Eclipse is taking place. It's going to be an absolutely huge event. It's going right over Jaga County, where I live, and uh, we're expecting about 195,000 people to come into the county to experience the totality of this solar eclipse. So uh, we'll have links below where you can get more information of the path of the uh, total solar eclipse so that uh, if you're on the outskirts of it and you have the day off, you can travel to uh, that area of the country that's nearby and experience the totality of the great North American solar eclipse. Again, that's April 8th, 2024, and we will have information below uh, so that you can uh, you know, read up on it and uh, know, know when it's going to be in an area near you, that sort of thing. Uh, we're also going to uh, remind you that the Maggard Meetup uh, takes place on April 20th, 2024, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at 124 South Winter Street, Adrian, Michigan, 49221. Uh, at the time I'm recording this, there are 76 tickets left. Uh, so there are 76 tickets still available. So uh, if you want to get to the, uh, if you want to attend the uh, Maggard Meetup, uh, get up there and get a ticket because they are going to be gone before you know it. Uh, again, the Maggard Meetup is April 20th, 2024 from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, tickets are $35 each. We'll have a link below where you can uh, get all the information about the meetup and uh you know, purchase a ticket, that sort of thing. So I would uh, do so before they're gone. I think there's going to be a last-minute run on these tickets, just a hunch on my part. Last year was an absolutely fantastic, fantastic event. I really enjoyed it, and I have my ticket, and I'm, I'm going to be attending, and I hope to see you there. Also, we have a date for the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. And that is going to be Saturday, September 14th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at River's Edge Cutlery, 4601 Lyman Drive, Hilliard, Ohio, 43026. So save the date for this year's Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. Once more, it'll be Saturday, September 14th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at River's Edge Cutlery. I also want to give you an update on the Edwin Jagger razor that I purchased from the Groomatorium. We talked about it on this morning's Monday morning mailbag, and it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous Edwin Jagger razor. It has that, that uh, bulbous handle. Uh, it's kind of like thicker in the middle. Uh, this is uh, a faux ebony and nickel plated handle. It's absolutely gorgeous, it, and it delivers a very, very nice shave. I've got the review done, and I'll be editing it, and hopefully we'll get it posted this week. Uh, but really, a terrific, terrific razor. It has a lot of nice heft to it and a wonderful balance. Well, anyhow, uh, I did a little more research on this, uh, and I found out uh, just from uh, scanning the barcode on the side of the box here. i got the box right here. And it's got a barcode right there on the side. And I scanned that with my phone, and it took me to um, a, a listing of this. And it is called the Edwin Jagger Diffusion Collection. That's part of their what they call their Diffusion Collection, imitation ebony and nickel, uh, nickel plating. And uh, I investigated a little bit further, and uh, I found one of these for sale on eBay for $55. Wow. Now, I said this morning it was about uh, $45, 40 to $45, something like that. And I got it for $25. Well, actually, it was $25.99. So about $26. When you add in the tax and shipping, it was $32 out the door, right to my doorstep, which is a nice savings over $55. However, I also found a listing for all these uh, razors on the Edwin Jagger uh, website. And I'll link it below so you can take a look at all these razors because uh, they have uh, one that's red and chrome. They have another one that's gray and chrome. They have another one that's uh, orange and chrome. They've got one that's imitation horn and chrome. 
Uh, they've got one that's ivory and chrome. Uh, mine is ebony and nickel. And they also have it in black and chrome, uh, blue and chrome. I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous looking razors that come in a variety of handle colors. That black part of the handle uh, comes in different different colors, uh, black, blue, orange, red, ivory, horn, really good looking razors. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I would, I'm thinking about maybe getting another one down the road uh, in another color because it is such a stunningly good looking razor. And the shape of the handle feels so nice, so natural in the hand. Well, anyhow, on the Edwin Jagger website, they sell this razor for 36 British pounds, which translates to about $45.86 US. So there you go. It's a $45 razor that you can get at the Groomatorium for 26. So the prices on the Edwin Jagger razors at uh, the Groomatorium are quite good. And again, uh, it's an absolutely beautiful looking razor. I've had a chance to shave with it. I really like the shave that it delivers. We'll get into more of that uh, with the review. But uh, just a stunningly good looking razor. Love the handle. Love how it fits in the, into the hand so naturally. And based on what I see from the Edwin Jagger website, uh, it's offered in a variety of colors and uh, different platings. Well, at least chrome plating up there. This one's nickel, so I'm, I'm assuming that it's offered in both nickel and chrome plating, although I don't see any nickel plating offered on the Edwin Jagger page. However, check the Groomatorium and see if they uh, will get in uh, similar looking uh, razors uh, in the near future, because I think this ebony is sold out now. But you know, you never know. They might get in a red one. They might get in an ivory one. They might get in a blue one. You never know. I know I'm going to be uh, keeping uh, close tabs on the Groomatorium site in case they offer uh, another uh, style razor like this. Uh, what did I say it was again? It was the Diffusion uh, Collection. Yeah, they offer another Diffusion style razor uh, from Edwin Jagger. And uh, maybe they'll have it in uh, blue or red or ivory or horn. Uh, really a terrific, terrific razor. It looks great and it just feels so naturally terrific in the hand. Uh, I like it a lot. So, uh, and again, the heft and the weight, perfect. The balance is great. And I, I, I can't say it enough. It fits so nicely and naturally into the hand. Really, really terrific. So um, just wanted to give you an update on that. So check out the Groomatorium from time to time uh, and what they offer in the way of Edwin Jagger razors. This particular razor that I have is now sold out. I don't know if they're going to get these back into stock or, or what they're going to be offering, but they do offer some nice Edwin Jagger razors, and I'm sure you'll find one that will appeal to you and will fit into your shave den very, very nicely. This was a really nice find, and I'm so glad I got it. And again, a really nice price. That's the real attraction of it all. Uh, you're getting an Edwin Jagger razor uh, at a nice, nice discount. So check it out again, the Groomatorium, and I will uh, link to that Edwin Jagger page where you can check out all the other razors like the one I have here with the different colored handles. So I'm going to be checking the Groomatorium from time to time to see if they have this razor in a different colored handles. Uh, so my thanks again to a viewer named Gary for pointing out the Groomatorium. Uh, this has been a terrific, terrific resource. And again, uh, they're right over there in, uh, I believe it's Greenville, Ohio, I think is where, where it is, right there on the Indiana border, about four hours away from where I live. I was really surprised. So uh, that in itself was kind of neat, too. So check them out, the Groomatorium, Edwin Jagger Razors, great prices, some wonderful Edwin Jagger Razor offerings up there. We'll have the link below. I received this email from viewer Bill Murphy, and he wrote, uh, well, the subject heading is, Phoenix Shaving Irish Coffee. And Bill wrote, Mark, I know how much you like the scent of coffee. You have got to try Phoenix Shaving's Irish Coffee. Out of all the Phoenix Shaving scents I have, and I've collected about three dozen over the last two years, this is my favorite. Here are the scent notes. And well, here's the scent profile, folks. Coffee, cream liquor, vanilla, benzoin, 
a dash of butterscotch, <laughs> and Irish whiskey, available through the month of March. I have never had Irish coffee as I do not drink, but I and my wife just love this scent. Hey, Bill, thanks very much for the heads up on this. I really do appreciate it. I don't drink either, so uh, I'm still looking forward to uh, trying this one. It's on my wish list, and uh, the fact that it has a dash of butterscotch, thanks, Mom, absolutely. That's a, that's a huge appeal there, uh, as well as the coffee scent uh, appeal. Yeah, both of those, uh, the coffee scent and the butterscotch, yeah, that makes it a winner in my book, absolutely. So thanks very much for uh, passing this along, uh, Bill. Really do appreciate it. Folks, we'll have the link below for Phoenix Shavings Irish Coffee, an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous scent. Once more, coffee, cream liquor, vanilla, benzoin, a dash of butterscotch, and Irish whiskey. That sounds marvelous, especially the coffee and the butterscotch. Absolutely fantastic. So it's only available in the month of March. So if you're interested, get up there now and get some before it's gone, before March ends. Bill, thanks again very, very much. Here's something really interesting. I received this email from viewer David Richland. And the subject heading is clown puke. <laughs> now, hang in there with me. Don't let that turn you off. This is really, really amazing. And uh, David writes, Hi, Mark. I just discovered something that I thought I would share with you and your listeners. I recently was looking at Barber Dave's and Such YouTube channel, and he was using a concoction he called clown puke. Simply put, it's an amalgamation of many different soaps and creams, tallow and non-tallow. The idea is to not throw away the bottom of the containers that have just a little bit of soap or cream left, but to mix them together in a dedicated container. In time, there will be enough to use for a shave. I was intrigued and impatient, so I thought I would make a container of my own. I just scraped out soaps from Parasso Red and White, Lather and Wood, Cremo Cooling Menthol, Trader Joe's Mango Cream, and Taylor of Old Bond Street's Sandalwood. No measuring, just eyeballing. I microwaved the mixture for 30 seconds so it could be stirred thoroughly. I then put it in the refrigerator until it cooled. It's not a hard puck, but rather soft, sort of in between hard and cream. Barber Dave said that doing this is somehow synergistic and just works. I have tried it, and not only does it just work, but it's absolutely amazing. I do a face lather with my Simpsons brush, and as you would say, boom, lather! <laughs> the lather is very slick and very cushioning. I got just a fantastic shave. I don't know if you're aware of this, but I thought I'd share it with you and your listeners, David Richland. David, thanks very much for this. This is Absolutely fantastic. And this reminds me of a news story I heard some years ago from Paul Harvey. And uh, it was an anecdotal uh, news story where there was a chili cook-off. I think it was in Texas. And uh, a lot of people had entered. And uh, there was a gentleman who also entered. And what he did was <laughs> he went to each contestant's uh, table where they were offering samples of their chili to be judged. And he would take a, a sample from each of the contestants' uh, chilies. And he went back to his station, his table, and he combined all of that, uh, all those samples of chili into his chili pot, you know, warmed everything up, stirred it together, and he won. <laughs> and he won. And I guess now they have a rule in place where you can't do that. And I thought to myself, that's brilliant. And this is the same thing. And I'm, I'm sure that this is going to work brilliantly. And it also allows you to save that extra little bit of soap and cream so it's not discarded. You can put it into a dedicated container and come up with your own uh, cream, soap, crope, that sort of thing. 
an absolutely fantastic, fantastic idea. Although I wish it wasn't called clown puke. <laughs> I wish it was called something else. We have to come up with a different name, but I don't want to steal anything from uh, Barber Dave, but I think, it's a, I think it's a great idea, and my hat's off to Barber Dave. I just wish that we had a, <laughs> a more inviting name, so to speak. So, uh, David, thanks very much for passing this along. Folks, if you try this, Please let us know how it worked for you. Send me an email at mondaymailbag at gmail.com or comment in an upcoming Monday morning mailbag uh, uh, or a video review and uh, we'll make sure to get those comments and air them on a Monday morning mailbag or second cup. Hey, David, thanks again very, very much. Well, in previous Monday morning mailbags, we talked about using dice to track blade usage. Uh, that is to say, if you use a, a razor blade, and let's say you've used it twice, you would put it on maybe a little uh, blade platform and then put a, uh, a die in front of there uh, with the number of uses the blade has had. So uh, if you've used it twice, then you would uh, put a, a little die in front of there uh, with uh, two showing so that you knew that, hey, I used that blade twice already. Uh, or three times or four times or whatever it is. And a lot of wet shavers use this system with dice, taking a die or two and putting it in front of the razor blade uh, so as to know how many times they've used that razor blade. Well, uh, this comes from Rodney Ripplinger, and he writes, Hi, Mark. I ran across something that might be of interest to some wet shavers. It's a site that has all kinds and types of dice. Wet shavers might find something there to track their blade usage. Very interesting stuff to look over. Rodney, hey Rodney, thank you very, very much for this. This website is called chessix.com. Now, the URL, the web address is www.chessix.com. Let me spell that for you. C-H-E-S-S-E-X, chessix.com. And they have all kinds of dice up there in different sizes, different shapes, different colors. It's really amazing. They have, uh, for instance, I'm looking at it, they have opaque, pastel, yellow, black, polyhedral dice. <laughs> How about that? They also have uh, some lucky green dice to celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day. And uh, really, a lot of different styles, a lot of different colors, a lot of different shapes. So uh, something to kind of dress up your blade usage uh, with a different color and different style, different shape uh, dice uh, that you can use right there in your shave den, rather than the uh, same old, same old uh, white dice with black dots, <laughs> you know, in those cubes. This is something that'll be a, a little more dynamic, a little more colorful, and uh, a little more attractive for your shave den. So check it out, chessex.com, C-H-E-S-S-E-X, chessex.com. A lot of great looking uh, dice up there in different shapes, different colors, different fonts, really, really neat, neat stuff. Hey, Rodney, thanks again for passing this along to all the listeners and viewers out there. Really do appreciate it. Well, before I get out of here, I'm going to recommend a movie. And seeing as how I talked about Phoenix Shaving's Damper Docks Shave Soap today in the Monday morning mailbag, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a given that I'm going to recommend the movie Tombstone from uh, 1993, starring Kurt Russell, Bill Paxton, Powers Booth, Billy Bob Thornton, Val Kilmer, and Sam Elliott. Yeah, <laughs> Wyatt Earp, uh, Doc Holliday, Gunfight at the OK Corral. Yeah, it's all there. This is really a classic Western. Now, it is rated R, so just be advised of that. There is going to be some violence, some language, some sexual content, that sort of thing. But it really is a classic Western. The performances are great. The direction is great. It really puts you back into the old West. It really is Terrific. A terrific, terrific movie. On Amazon, it's got a 90% five-star rating. I don't think I have to say anything beyond that. It really is a terrific classic Western movie. Again, from 1993, Tombstone, 
starring Kurt Russell, Bill Paxton, Powers Booth, Billy Bob Thornton, Val Kilmer, and Sam Elliott. Give it a look, especially if you're a fan of Westerns. And that wraps up another Second Cup. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or friend. My thanks to everyone who commented and contributed to today's show, and I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together again with you on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that second cup.